hello welcome back to my channel Bibbity Bobbity Books my name is Ellie and today I thought I would do a book review video so today I'm going to be reviewing Fortuna Sworn by KJ Sutton so the first part of this video is going to be spoiler free and then the second half I'm going to go into a little bit more details and a few spoilers and things but don't worry I'll give you plenty of warning before I do that so if you haven't read the book yet you can just listen to the first part and then click off and maybe come back if you do end up reading the book and you want to know a bit more of my thoughts. So this book is actually a self-published fantasy romance novel and it's the first in a series and we follow the main character Fortuna Swarm who is actually a nightmare which is a particular fantasy race and her powers mean that she can sense your deepest fears through touch so she'd be able to sense what you fear most and she can then manipulate your mind to make you think that your fears have become real so for example if you're really terrified of spiders or something she'd be able to convince you that you're covered in spiders so she's got this really cool power and she lives in this world where there's lots of different fantasy races and and they're all descended from fallen angels but they're very much hunted by the humans they kind of hunt these creatures down and sell them on the black market and things so Fortuna has spent her life kind of in hiding she works as a waitress in a restaurant and we find out early on that her brother went missing two years ago and was actually presumed dead but this has always been something that Fortuna has felt very uncomfortable about she always feels like there's more to it and that he can't possibly be dead and then one day this fey male <laughs> shows up and tells her that he knows a little bit more about what happened to her brother and he says that he will help her if she strikes up a deal with him and follows him to the Unseelie court. So that's what happens, Fortuna ends up going to the Unseelie court and the rest of the book takes place there. So while this book is technically an urban fantasy because it's set in modern day, it very quickly moves to a very dark fantasy setting in the Unseelie court which is this underground fey realm where there's lots of magical creatures and it's very dark and twisted. And so I actually quite enjoyed that about this book because typically I don't love a urban fantasy, I much prefer a more classic fantasy setting so I feel like we still got those elements in this book. This is definitely a very dark take on a fae story which I quite like because I feel like a lot of the time we get lots of fairy stories and things that are quite light and fluffy often in the YA genre whereas this is definitely adult and it doesn't shy away from some very dark and disturbing themes in here so definitely check out the content warnings before you go in here because there's lots of torture and slavery and all sorts in here so it definitely doesn't shy away from those darker themes which is quite an interesting take on a fey romance story we have a lot of morally grey characters in here, I'm just going to say that off the bat Fortuna herself definitely makes some decisions in this book that you may or may not necessarily agree with so just bear that in mind going into this one because I feel like if you need a protagonist that you can root for 100% you might not necessarily get that in here because as I said Fortuna is fairly morally grey and for me that meant that I couldn't really connect with her as a character and wasn't particularly invested in her plot line so definitely keep that in mind before you go into this one I will also say that this book is very very fast paced which I feel like could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on your reading tastes so it's definitely something that you'll be able to fly through and eat up really quickly so if you're looking for some something like that and you like the premise of this story then perhaps you'll really enjoy it. I personally found it was a little bit too fast paced because it meant that the world felt quite underdeveloped and I didn't really feel invested in the characters or the love interest just because it was so fast paced I think and you know Fortuna will find herself in some situations or some peril and things in this book which are then resolved really quickly like within the chapter so it just felt super super fast paced so keep that in mind before you go into this book as well. In terms of the writing in here, I would say the writing is quite plain. It's not particularly descriptive. I, I will say I did notice a couple of times in here that there were a few sort of errors in the writing. There was a couple of times where there was some words missing and things which kind of bugged me a little bit in here but I don't know if that's just a printing error or something. So all in all, I found the plot in this book interesting enough. I wasn't particularly overwhelmed with it. 
but to be fair I think part of the issue is that I was very hyped for this book so I read a lot of amazing reviews for this book a lot of booktubers that I watch really really love this book so I had very very high hopes I set the bar really high which may have affected my opinions when I actually got around to reading this one because unfortunately it didn't quite reach that for me um, but I thought the plot was interesting enough I've heard that this book has been compared to A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas and I can definitely see the similarities it's definitely got similar themes in here and the second half of this book is very similar to some of the events that happen in Akatar. so I can see the link that people have made there but what I will say is that I personally definitely preferred A Court of Thorns and Roses a lot more than this one and I think that is because of how fast paced this one is and what I loved about the Akatar series is that it's really really character driven and we get amazing characters that are really Really well fleshed out and thought through and the chemistry and everything between the characters felt very real because of that and I feel like that was definitely missing in here for me so I would have loved a little bit more character development and world building in here for it to reach that standard but this book ended on a cliffhanger or a kind of reveal which has me intrigued so I probably will end up picking up the next book in this series even though I didn't 100% love this book so yeah take from that what you will <laughs> but those are kind of my overarching views on this book really those are all my kind of non-spoilery opinions so if you haven't yet read this book I would probably recommend clicking off this video now just so that you don't spoil yourself because I am now going to jump into some more spoilery thoughts so thank you so much for listening and perhaps pop back once you've read the book if you're interested to hear some more of my thoughts okay so now into some more sort of spoilery thoughts and things. I need some tea. <laughs> okay, so the whole plot about Fortuna going and finding her brother. So I personally didn't feel particularly invested in that plot line and I think it's because we didn't actually see Fortuna interacting with her brother before she goes to the Unseelie court so I never felt the relationship between them. I know we had a lot of times where Fortuna was reflecting on the past and she would say things like um, oh me and my brother were so close, we made this pact that we would always look out for each other when our parents died, yada yada, but I just didn't feel that invested. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me, but I think it's just because I didn't see see them together so I didn't really care that much and also because I didn't really gel that well with Fortuna as a character herself. I mentioned it before that she's quite morally grey and I think some of the decisions and the way that she acts in this book is just so not how I would act that I just didn't really gel with her, I didn't connect with her and therefore I didn't really care. I mean the part where she kills the leviathan that was so gruesome, like I just felt so like, oh my gosh, that was awful seeing that happen. So little things like that, I just was like, oh, I don't know if I like you, but I see what KJ Sutton is trying to do because she's creating a character that isn't supposed to necessarily be likeable, that is morally grey and things. But for me, that just meant that I just didn't really care. <laughs> so that was a shame. And as I said before, it just feels so fast paced. Like I feel like literally Fortuna got told about the whole trial situation and the fact that she could contend to become Queen of the Unseelie Court like at the end of one chapter and there's that scene where she's lying in bed with Colith and he's like, are you going to do it? And she's like, yeah, I'm going to do it because I'm going to do anything to save my brother. And then literally the next chapter, it's day one and we're already into the trials. So I just feel like it's just so fast paced that it felt like it was jumping from one thing to the next thing to the next thing and I didn't have time for my brain to like absorb what was going on. I think I would have liked to have seen Fortuna building up more anticipation about the trials and things and then I would have felt that as a reader, I would have got more nervous for her about the trials but because we jumped straight in, I didn't really feel that nervous or that worried about it because I was like, oh, 
we're straight in we're doing the trial straight away if that makes sense and I know we did get a little bit of Fortuna reading the books and things trying to like get a one-up on the on the Faye and everything but I think I would have just enjoyed that a little bit more if we'd seen her uncovering more about the world and everything and this kind of goes back to the whole world building idea as well like I just feel like there's so many unanswered questions in this book and Fortuna very much just kind of accepts her situation and just kind of goes with it and she doesn't do that much kind of asking questions or uncovering what on earth is happening which I feel like is a shame you know I mean what's the deal with this world we've got all these fallen creatures who are hunted down by the humans but I don't really understand how all of these really powerful fae are kind of living in this underground world and they have like humans as slaves and stuff so they're obviously really powerful much more powerful than the humans yet they're oppressed by the humans and they're not able to go up above ground and they have to be in hiding like I don't really understand that whole dynamic and I just felt like I just wanted a little bit more really to be able to understand the world and even to understand more of Colith and his situation and things in terms of the love interest so the romance between i'm going to focus on fortuna and collis i felt <laughs> like it was just all very much on one level i don't know how else to explain this i think what I like in romance novels is when you get a slow burn romance and you get all of that angst and that tension that's built across a book and you see people's feelings start to change towards each other and things like that and seeing that development and progression in the romance whereas I didn't feel like that really happened in this book so you know one moment Fortuna was kind of not trusting Collis at all didn't really like him and then as soon as they got married they were literally like kissing up against a tree <laughs> uh, it just felt very sudden to me and I understand that's obviously to do with the mating bond the fact that they suddenly became mates and obviously that's going to change your feelings towards each other and things and there was this attraction right from the start I do understand that but I just felt like it it started there and it kind of stayed there through the whole book we didn't really get any progression from that it was just very clear that Fortuna was very attracted to Collis right from the beginning we did see her sort of questioning herself every now and then so there was a lot of times where she was like oh I really fancy him <laughs> oh but I can't because he's a bad person so we do see her kind of toiling with herself a little bit throughout this book but I just feel like we didn't really see that tension build across the book it just kind of stayed at one level I think for me and also of course we've got the fact that Collis literally just let her get whipped right in the beginning of the story and as soon as that happened I was like well I can't ship this romance now because he's just a terrible person <laughs> so that kind of ruined it a little bit for me but what I will say is that I really enjoyed the scenes in the dreamscape and the relationship between Fortuna and Ollie I was much more invested in that and I felt much more connected to those two as a character that felt a lot more real to me and um, so I definitely definitely enjoyed those scenes and I'm actually quite intrigued about what the deal is with this dreamscape because I think it's quite an interesting concept and you know Fortuna thinks that she just made this character up in her head and that he's not real but then we've got bits in the book that suggest that he might be you know she woke up and she had that ointment on her wounds after she got whipped and I'm really intrigued about that so that's definitely something that I enjoyed in this book and I really liked all of those scenes and you know the fact that the leviathan ended up in the dreamscape like flying off like I thought that was quite nice and I don't know if that's just a symbol of him being free in the afterlife or whether Fortuna was actually able to somehow use her powers to put him in her dreamscape which would be pretty cool I don't know what the deal is but I'm quite invested and interested to find out more about that I'm also really interested in Laurie as a character and I actually found I was more interested in Fortuna's relationship with him across the book than Colith because I feel like the relationship between Fortuna and Laurie had a little bit more to it and definitely had a bit more um, of, a, of a journey than Colith which as I said before felt very much on one level so I'm quite interested in that and then obviously we've got the plot twist at the end of the book 
which is really intriguing so I am definitely you know interested in finding out what happens in the next few books and I have heard from some people that the books get better and better so yeah I'm hoping that I will enjoy the books as I read on and I'm hoping we'll find a little bit more about the different courts now that we've had that reveal and things and I'm hoping that we might start to get a few more pieces of world building across the books just to flesh out this world a little bit more and I'm also hoping that I might feel a little bit more invested going into book two you know I have a little bit of an understanding about some of the characters and things because as I said before um I sadly didn't feel super super invested in any of the characters in here in this book so those are kind of all of my thoughts really I feel like this was just a bit of a random splurge of me <laughs> just chatting about this book I only finished this book yesterday so I feel like it still kind of needs to settle a little bit in my head um, but I just wanted to kind of ramble at you for a bit on my thoughts and feelings really and just to see if anyone else felt similar to me because yeah as I said I've heard largely good things about this book and I was quite surprised that I didn't love it as much as everybody else seems to but yeah I'm hoping that I'll enjoy the series as it goes on I hope you found this video interesting and um, I'd love to know your thoughts and feelings and I would love to have a chat with you about it anyway I'm gonna head off now and I guess I'll see you next time with another video bye